All right, 7.1, continuous random variables. Let's look at some definitions. An attribute is a quality or characteristic given to a person, group, or object. A frequency histogram is a graph with intervals on the horizontal axis and frequencies on the vertical axis. Frequency polygon is a segmented line that joins the midpoints of the top of each column in the frequency histogram. These are some situations that result in discrete data and others that result in continuous data over a range. Now let's look at the first thing. What we're going to do is look at this particular example. All right. Chris works at a tire store. Chris can change a tire on a rim in 8 to 12 minutes with all times in between equally likely. What is the probability that Chris changes a given tire in less than 9 minutes? What is the probability that it takes between 9 and 11 and a half minutes? What is the probability that it takes exactly 10 minutes? Well, let's look at this probability density diagram. Now we can see that between in less than 9 minutes is this section right here of the graph. Less than 9 minutes covers what part of the graph? If we were to calculate how much that covers, well, that covers a, um, a total of 0 0.25, so a quarter of the entire graph that's listed there, okay? And why it's a quarter, if you can see here, this piece right here covers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 blocks out of a total of 2, 4, 6, 8 by 2, 4, 6. So 12 blocks out of 48 blocks altogether. 12 out of 48 gives us 0 0.25. So what we can say when we write this out on the actual graph, what we're actually trying to do is we're saying some variable x is less than 9 minutes. So the probability of getting some variable x, let's rewrite that, variable x, less than 9 minutes is equal to 0 0.25. So 25% chance that the oil change will take less than 9 minutes. Now the next part is, what is the, so we're going to erase this red part here, folks, we're going to erase that <coughs> and calculate part B. Part B says, what is the probability that it takes between 9 minutes and 11 and a half minutes? Well, that means that we've got to cover this section. 9 to 11 and a half covers this section of the graph. And what that means is how much of that is covered there. And if you were to count it out, you would have seen that it covered 5 times 6, which is 30, over the 48 that we had earlier. So probability of, of getting something... Uh, some variable x being between 9 and 11 and a half minutes. So let's rewrite this in such a way that makes a little more sense. And that is, we want to write the probability of some variable x is between 9 and 11 and a half minutes is going to equal what? Well, it will equal... Now we have to calculate it 0 0.625. How do we calculate that? Well, let's go back a little bit, folks, just so that we can understand this. How did we get 0 0.625? Well, what we need to calculate here is how much of the graph is actually covered. And we're going to erase this quarter and 5 eighths and see how we another way we can do it. Well, we have 30 blocks covered here. What's not covered is the remaining, so 30 over 48 blocks in total. 30 over 48, if we reduce it, will be 5 eighths, and 5 eighths will equal 0 0.625. So the answer here is 0 point, the probability of getting, of having an all, all change between 9 and 11 and a half minutes is 62.5%. Now, the list last part, what is the probability that it takes exactly 10 minutes? Now, this is something you have to understand, 
fully. So we're going to erase this block out and we're going to look at the last one. So let's erase the block out and let's look at the last one. What is it saying and what does it want us to be able to do? Let's see. Here we go. The probability of getting some variable exactly 10 minutes long, equaling exactly 10 minutes. Now, a lot of you might think, oh, we cover the, we make a block there. But no, folks, exactly 10 minutes means that we want, the answer is going to be zero. Why? Why is it going to be zero? Well, li listen, folks, we want exactly 10. That means not a second earlier, not a second more. Exactly 10 means not even a millisecond. Not even a milla millisecond, folks. Not even the tiniest measure of time possible is allowed. It has to be exactly 10. Well, folks, that, that possibility is non-existent. We have one possibility of 10 over a million different possibilities that could happen over here. Millions of them all inside here. So imagine it's one over 10 billion. All right? One over 10, all right, let's do 10 million. One over 10 million. One over 10 billion is not even enough. In fact, if we want, we could change this, this 10 million, 10 billion to one over infinity. What's the possible answer decimal value that will be? Well, folks, as that denominator gets larger and larger, essentially the number we're looking at is zero. It is impossible to have a value exactly at a certain value. We're going to see that in a later lesson. Moving on. We're going to look at the next, pos next lesson. Just a moment, folks. All right, next we have a cubit measure, the distance from the elbow to the tip of the outstretched middle finger. Ranji class has 30 students. Each student determines the length of a cubit of his or her arm. The frequency table shows the results. So we have the results here. Sketch a frequency distribution histogram. So we have frequency along the y-axis and we have our intervals along the x-axis. And what we will do is do 514 to 516 and so on and create our frequency distribution histogram. All right, and we end up having all of these values. So we have one, two, three, <coughs> and so on. You can all draw this. I'm assuming folks we can draw all of this. So what we've got here is just you can keep drawing them all the way three, four, eight, five, four, two, one, and so on. But what's more important is we're actually going to go to part B and add a frequency polygon to the histogram in part A. So to create a frequency polygon, what you want to do is find the midpoint of each of those bars and connect them. And when you find the midpoint of each of those bars, what you're going to do is connect all those midpoints all the way up and across the actual graph. So we would actually draw them. Now, estimate the mean cubit length in the class. How do we find the mean? Okay, let's just go over that. This is in the last unit, so I'm assuming you all know how to do this. And that is what you want to do. <coughs> what we want to do is look at this and find the midpoints of all of these values and then weight them according to this. So we're gonna find a weighted mean. Once we do that, we can determine the mean cubit length of the class. Now, would this be considered a uniform distribution? No, folks. This last example was a uniform distribution. You can see that the bar length of each of these, you can see the bar length right here, is the same all the way across. That is considered a uniform distribution. Now, across on the other side, in this one, what you will see is that as soon as we start to draw it, you can see that it's definitely not uniform. It has to be e the same height all the way across the actual uh, histogram for it to be uniform. 
All right, folks. Well, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.